Hi, I'm Freedom Coder, and welcome to this part of the PCG series. In this video, I'll show you how to sample points from a mesh and then spawn other actors essentially on top of that mesh on the sample points. So that's essentially the approach I used for uh, making sure there are lots of big rocks in the jungle scene and they all have like foliage and ferns and stuff on top. So that's what I'm kind of recreating here. Uh, the node we need is mesh to points, and this takes a static mesh. So in this case, I want to use this rock uh, as our base. Uh, I'm going to copy the static mesh uh, reference and paste it in here. Oh, mixed my uh, keys up. And it should, oh yeah, let's draw a debug. And you can see a bunch of points have already been created. Um, now if I overlay, if I essentially put this mesh at the same point, like at the same location as the PCG graph, you will see that these points are actually uh, directly on the triangles of the mesh. So by default, the mesh two points node um, places one point in each triangle of the mesh. Uh, you can change the behavior a little. So there's also place points of vertices if you do that. It's doing things like that. They are all like one point per vertex. And you can also choose to voxelize the mesh. So this does not create volume points. It just means it voxelizes the mesh using the geometry tools, the geometry scripting tools, and then it extracts the surface from that. So it's still only surface data you'll get, uh, but it will be more even. So let me just hide the rock a little so you can see it has sort of created more even spacing. So if you have meshes that have very, uh, like some really large triangles and some really small triangles, it might be a good way to kind of get general purpose. It's not 100% accurate. So you can see some points are sort of inside the mesh and some are outside. Um, you can change the size of the vocals. Uh, be careful with that. Um, it's got a tendency to just get really expensive because it's like a quadratic uh, performance costs. So if I decrease size, you can see it creates more more accurate points. Uh, I don't have, I, I don't do any performance testing, so I can't tell you how efficient this node is. Uh, just from like general voxel experience, take care. Uh, for this one, I think just using it from triangles is fine because this mesh is really nice and has very even triangles all around. Uh, so that'll be enough. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I obviously want to have foliage just spawn on top. So we'll do a check whether the point that has been created, the normal of the point is up or like compared to up. And for that, we use a normal to density uh, and that does exactly that. So by default, it's already doing this behavior. So you can see, I'm actually going to increase the point debug a little so you can see better. Um, maybe like this, yeah. So you can see uh, what it does is it compares each point's orientation with the given world normal and then applies a mask. So uh, in the settings, you can set the normals, but default is already up because I imagine that's the uh, use case that is used the, of the most often. Uh, but yeah, you can just put in any one, any, any normal you want and it'll update. Um, based on that so yeah back to up and you can also have a few other parameters that make it like stronger or less strong uh the effect so this includes more and uh this includes less and like most density functions you can also change how the density is applied to previous ones since we don't have any previous density it's just you know just set override uh, the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, because if I spawn plants on this, it's most likely be a lot. So I'm going to cull some more some more points. I'm going to do that by applying a density noise. And in this case, this noise, I'll do a multiply. The points are going to get tiny again. So let me, uh, let me just do it this so it can be better seen. So on the, on the density noise, I'm going to do multiply uh, instead of set, because when I do a set, it'll just override all the previous values. But if I do a multiply, it 
uh, takes the previous value, so the higher ones essentially, and brings them down. And afterwards, I'm going to do a density filter, and that will filter out like the darkest, like the lowest density points. And we are left with like a couple, a handful of points. And on these points, I want to spawn my bushes. So I'll spawn static mesh, static mesh spawner, and we'll use this one and add it to the spawner as a mesh entry. And there you go, it's already spawning them all. And you have some points actually here that are also, that's also spawning on. And that's all there is to getting points from a mesh, as far as I can tell. Uh, but obviously, if we have a spawner like distributing lots of different rocks around the map, like the scatter um, that I've shown in a previous video, then we obviously want to spawn on all of them. So what I did is um, I first created the uh, the large rocks, so this one, uh, and I scattered them around. So for that, I'm going to use a surface sampler. Essentially doing what we did in the basic tutorial. So I'm going to do a surface sampler, get a bunch of points, uh, do a density filter to make sure we don't have too many points. And now we have no points. Oh, actually we do, but they are just tiny. Uh, so I imagine that's something that Epic will maybe improve soon. That like the way points are displayed is not this sort of random because I find myself just changing the point size a lot just to see them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it fairly high so we have to don't have too many points. You have like oh, a couple. And I'm gonna do another static mesh spawner. And in this one I am going to put the big rock. So come on. So yeah there we have a bunch of big rocks and because I wanna be a more, bit more natural, I'll make them more random with the transform point. Transform points. And I'll add just maximum rotation. So from 0 to 360. Nope, not like that. There we go. And I'm also changing the scale a little, so we have a bigger rock size, so maybe too big. Um, so I said, let's go in the other direction. Some smaller rocks. There we go. Now uh, we have good, like, more, uh, more natural look of rocks. And I'm going to essentially use the same thing uh, as in the scatter tutorial. I'm going to use the points where the rocks spawn as a source to copy the mesh to points. So we're kind of copying them all over. I'm going to use copy, copy points. Uh, I'm actually going to use this one as target. And then I am using the mesh to points as the source uh, save real quick and not much has happened let me just debug but you can see every rock now has these points and because we still want to have we, we still want to only spawn plants on top i will put this out into the normal density because then uh every point like it doesn't matter how ro how the rock is rotated it will always be up and there you go, we have stuff spawning on top of the rocks. And that's how you put plants on meshes. And this should work with any mesh. Um, I don't know if the voxelization works with like open meshes, but the vertex-based ones should work no matter what. Uh, and yeah, that's how you sample meshes and put stuff on things. I hope that helped and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye.